Well, good evening. Um, my name is Greg Bossell, and I'm serving this year as the men's ministry chairman. I'm only able to do that because i got a lot of great guys working with me and helping me because uh, even doing this scares me to death. So, But tonight what we're going to do, we're going to hear two testimonies. Uh, first, we're going to hear from Derek Hickernell and then Charlie Quillen. And then after that, uh, we'll immediately go down to the Rock and enjoy the dessert contest. So I hope you can stay for that. And um, before they come up, I just want to say my family and I have been coming here since 1999. And one of the great things, one of the great influences in my life has been the men at this church who have taught me, guided me, encouraged me, corrected me when I needed it, actually, in some cases. Um, but because of their help and guidance and their faith, I have grown, and I will always be in debt to them and always thankful for them. Um, I'll never forget the first time I was here. You all were, we were building this sanctuary, and we were painting, and some guy out there said, hey, I'm Jim Hurd. Who are you? And he said, I'm so glad to meet you. He said, you know what? I feel like the Lord's drawing you here. Wow. And then he, he went on to teach me, to encourage me, along with a lot of other great guys. And I'm so thankful. And I, I would be willing to bet a lot of you have the same stories. Men who have changed your lives, who encouraged you, made a difference in your family's lives. We're so blessed. So, same thing tonight. I, I really ask that you pray for Derek and Charlie as they come up, because standing here is not easy. And when I asked them to do it, they immediately said yes. And I said, look, just tell people what the Lord did for you, and you'll be fine. So you're among friends and family. So uh, with that said, I'd like to introduce Derek Hickenhill. Good evening. Like to uh, at this time, I just want to thank the Lord for uh, letting me be here to share my testimony with everybody. Uh, this is actually the first time I've given my testimony to a, a group, really, and uh, I think this is a, an opportunity the Lord has laid on my heart that I needed to do, and I'm glad to have this opportunity to share it with you, um, just to give Him glory where He deserves. Um, uh, for those of you who do not know me, I, I'm a uh, originally from West Virginia. I grew up there, um, was born and raised there. Um, I have a, my mother and father, they, they still live there. They have uh, are since divorced since I moved out, but uh, my mother, Karen, and my father, Scott. And then I have a uh, younger brother, Kyle. And, uh, you know, growing up, we didn't have uh, the church family like we have here at Ridgeview. Um, my childhood, I grew up in a Catholic church uh, we were we would attended church every Sunday. We uh, attended the evening night mass or the midnight mass, sorry, and then the Christmas uh, morning service, and we attended Easter service, and that's about as far as it went. We didn't pray in the in the evenings. We didn't pray over dinner. We didn't really, as a family, thank God for the provisions that He gave us every day, all the blessings that uh, we were blind to, that I was blind to. Um, being uh, drawn here to Ridgeviews, it, it was a, uh, a point in my life where uh, I thought I had everything. I thought I had everything lined out. And uh, really, I was very blind and foolish. And uh, just to, uh, to kind of go through my growth and my ability to come to, lo come to know and love our, our Savior, Jesus, um, when I was uh, about 16 or 17 years old, I was starting to uh, really have doubts about why I was going to uh, the church we were going to at the time. Um, we talk about being lukewarm Christians. We talk about that in uh, Sunday school. And we read this in uh, Crazy Love. And, uh, you know, we were below lukewarm Christians in that church. And I, I'm, there was probably some very, 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 uh, very good, good examples of Christians at that church, but honestly, we weren't, we weren't like here. The Holy Spirit was not present at that church, and I really began to wonder what I was missing. Something wasn't right, and uh, I had some friends in high school. They uh, 
One of them was the uh, son of, uh, of a pastor at the Baptist Church in St. Albans, where the town I grew up. And uh, he would challenge the youth. He was, his dad was very involved with the uh, FCA at my high school, St. Albans High School. Uh, my high school, there was about 900 kids divided amongst three grades, and we had an FCA program that had, I mean, it was jam-packed. I mean, it was something I had never seen before, a gathering of, of kids who uh, were either knew Christ as their Savior or coming to know Christ or just were there for pizza. I mean, it was crazy how many kids they packed in a, in a classroom. And I, I started coming, and my, my friend, he was really adamant about not being... Uh, sedentary, not just being lukewarm. He didn't say it exactly that way, but looking back on it, I mean, he was on fire for Jesus, and I was not, and he was trying to draw those around him to come to know Jesus to, to build them up. So, needless to say, I graduated high school, and all my friends and I, and I parted ways. Uh, I went to uh, WVU Tech, which is an engineering campus for uh, WVU, uh, just uh, about an hour east of Charleston, and the uh, world is different in college. They, uh, they really want to test and try you, and I was not, I was not saved. I was, I was a believer at that time of uh, works because of my, my Catholic upbringing, and I was on a path for hell, and the world was ready to take advantage of that. They were ready to manipulate and twist everything that I thought I knew was right, which was actually wrong. And uh, by the grace of God, working behind the scenes and picking me up when I wasn't asking for it, he got me through those hard times when people would tell me things about my beliefs that were wrong. And, you know, sometimes they were right, and sometimes they were just trying to manipulate me. Uh, it was about the time I was ready to graduate in 2006 from college. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, interview with uh, AEP down here in Kingsport. And uh, it was kind of a call out of the blue. And uh, it was really interesting because I'd never been to Tennessee before. Um, we used to vacation in North Carolina a lot, but at that point in time, Interstate 26 didn't exist, and the way we traveled, we just never came to Tennessee. And uh, kind of felt this drawing to go there. Didn't really know at that time the Holy Spirit was, was working on me. The seed had been planted when I was in high school uh, through my friend. Uh, his name's Joshua Harpold. He's now a, uh, <laughs> coincidentally, he's now a, a minister in, uh, in Ohio. He's a preacher, preaching the name of Jesus, and uh, followed in his dad's footsteps. But going to church with him for a little while, he, and hearing the name of Jesus at his dad's church planted, planted that seed in my heart. But uh, anyway, I felt the calling to come to Tennessee, and uh, it was just something was different about it down here. And uh, you know, it wasn't wild and wonderful like West Virginia. I mean, I was definitely wild, and I certainly wasn't wonderful. But there's something about Tennessee. I, you know, I knew I had to. I had to figure out how to get here. It something was drawing me. And uh, about it was about this time in 2006, they called me, and I you know came down here, had my interview. Went back home. It was amazing weather. It was about like we had before Christmas. It was like 70 degrees out. I came down here thinking it was going to be freezing cold, and I was about overdressed. And it was anyway. The uh, they called me back and said, "We'd like for you to come down here." So I, you know, I said definitely. You know, I, and then I thought about it. You know, at that point in time, other than vacationing, I lived in West Virginia. I, my family lived there. My uh, friends were all there. And I just agreed to leave everything I knew and just go. And uh, I had the strange desire to do it. I didn't understand it, but I knew I had to go. So uh, I went <laughs> and uh, moved down here in, the, in May of 2006 and kind of established myself. I didn't know anybody. I knew the people I worked with. And uh, it was really by the grace of God that, uh, that I made it you know, a couple months on my own, really. I mean, I kind of lived on my own in school, but never really on my own. And, you know, it was kind of sad, but I thought I was doing pretty good on my own. Um, really, at that time, I didn't have a church to go to. I thought I was doing okay, though. I was foolish and blind. Didn't realize what all God had, had given me, what all God had 
you know, opportunities that God had, had blessed me with and how he, was, how he was working through me or working to do something in my life. Um, in the summer of 2006, I'm, on a random occasion, uh, somebody, somebody thought they knew who I was and, it, <laughs> and uh, she was mistaken. And uh, that person is my wife, Amanda. She thought I was somebody else. And hopefully she still <laughs> isn't wishing I was somebody else. But anyway, um, I, I wasn't looking for Amanda. I wasn't looking for anybody, really. I thought I was, uh, I was fine. And, you know, Amanda came into my life. Amanda was saved as a young girl. And, you know, I wasn't looking for anything other than just, you know, something called me down here. So, you know, I, after talking to Amanda, we decided to go out. And uh, I was a nervous wreck because I really wasn't expecting, you know, to find somebody that, uh, you know, after talking to and getting to know a little bit, it was just really taken back on. I just couldn't believe that, that she would go out with me and, and entertain the idea of talking to me and you know, that, after our, I took her out to eat, and, you know, I didn't know anybody, didn't know anything around here, so uh, I believe she told in, in her testimony that uh, the only thing I could think to do was to take her home to visit my pet cat, and that's true. <laughs> I didn't know anybody else. So I was scared to death, though, because I didn't, something was telling me, don't mess this up. Something was telling me, and uh, I was so scared to mess it up, I, I didn't even hug her and tell her, you know, really, when I when we parted ways, I didn't. I guess I didn't act like I even was interested in her, and uh, I just I don't know something about it was don't mess this up. So anyway, uh, I called her back later, and uh, just to kind of fast forward in uh, 2007, she agreed to marry me, and uh, I mean that was at that time one of the, the greatest blessings in my life, Amanda. I believe the Lord has worked through Amanda to straighten me out. Amanda, she may not be very, very tall and very, you know, muscular girl, but she, she can tell me what, what I'm doing wrong and what I should be doing right. And I believe the Lord has used her to, to shape me to be the, the husband I should be. Because Lord knows I've messed up a lot. I messed up before Amanda knew me, and I messed up after she knew me, and Lord knows that. But I was still on the, the path to hell at this point. I was not saved. In uh, 2008, I need to back up a second there. When Amanda agreed to, uh, to marry me, she also brought a child into my life that uh, at that point in time I wasn't looking for. Uh, her name's Tatum. Uh, you know, being a single guy just out of college and then getting married and then having a child in your life is a big change and it's an opportunity to make a lot of mistakes and uh, the Lord had been working in my life because I could have really messed up and it just been an awful stepfather and I, I thank the Lord that he's given me the guidance whether I was asking for it or not to help raise Tatum I'm very proud of, of Tatum and uh, what she's accomplished in her life, and I look forward to how she's going to grow into a woman and, and how the Lord will use her one day. But uh, in 2008, my little boy Gavin was born, and uh, he was my next blessing in life from, from God. And, you know, that, that changed my life right there. I now had a real family. And... <laughs> Gavin, you're right, buddy. You asked me if I was going to get up here and cry, and it's my whale's starting to run over dust. I'm going to use that if that's okay. But my whale is starting to bubble up, so uh, forgive me. I don't often cry, tear up in front of people, but if the Lord's going to, if the Lord's going to get me all excited and, and fill up my whale, by golly, I'm going to let the tears flow. <clears throat> After uh, Gavin was born, you know, there was something... I thought I had everything at that point in time. But at the same sense, there's something missing. You know, we didn't attend a, a church here. We didn't really have many friends. 
Amanda was from Lee County, Virginia, so when she agreed to marry me, she left her family, her friends. And, you know, we, we were by ourselves here. But, uh, you know, it was a funny thing. When I worked for American Electric Power, I used to come home from Riverport Road. And the fastest way for me to come home was right out through here. You, you, before the traffic light was out there on Stone Drive, you could kind of cut up through Hammond Avenue and over to Heard Road and right out to, into, uh, back out to Carter's Valley, and I'd be at home. And uh, it was funny because uh, I remember one day I had been working late. It was on a Wednesday. And uh, I drove right by here. And uh, I remember it caught my eye. I was like, there's, there's an enormous number of people at that church. I can't remember if it was, it had to be right before church started, the service that evening. And uh, I was like, there's something about that. And it's almost like it, it's like, a, like a, something clicked. You know, like that's what I'm missing. I was missing Jesus in my life. I was missing fellowship with, with Christians. I was missing... This is a lot. <clears throat> I remember uh, in, uh, it finally came to be about 2011. We decided, you know, we needed to uh, we needed to take get the kids involved in church, and you know, Amanda was very persistent about that point, and I'm glad she was. And uh, you know, I, I mentioned I was like, well, I drove past this church. We gotta go check it out. And I remember coming in here and visiting, and uh, I mean, it was just amazing, the, uh, the worship, you know, the singing, and uh, Pastor John's message, and, you know, meeting everybody, Brian, and, and Israel, and Nathan, and we met, you know, Dan, and everybody, I mean, we were meeting all sorts of people, and then uh, we, you know, we visited, so then we went home, and Pastor John and Brian came back by. It must have been a weekend, or the next weekend, or a couple days later, and they came by and visited. I was like, I, "That's the first time that's ever happened to me that somebody came by just to talk to us, to ask us how we're doing, and just there's something about that. I felt that that pull here, I, you know, something something drawn. So it came to be uh, BBS." summer of 2011 and we decided kids need to we we're going to take kids to VBS and I wasn't certain what we we're going to run into I didn't know uh, just said we need to do it and uh, we came to drop the kids off and we were invited to stay so we stayed and listened to uh, what everybody had to, to tell about that day and I'm I'm sorry if I'm running long here I, I've just I just realized what time it was but you know Lord was calling us to stay. He was using several of you that are here tonight to talk to us, to just to to help show what what light you have for Jesus. And it it had an effect on us because we stayed. After VBS, we started coming. We uh, attended church as regularly as we can, we could, and uh, it was amazing what happened. I, all along, I thought something was missing, you know, after, what, I, let me say that again. I thought I had everything I needed, and then I realized something was missing again. And what, through Sunday school, through worship, I realized I was missing the Lord. I was still on that road to hell. There wasn't anything I can do to stop that, except for one thing, is to give my life to Jesus Christ. In October 2011, the Holy Spirit was working on me hard, that, and he'd been telling me I need to do it. It's, I mean, you could feel it. It was something I had to do. And one day, that was it. I said, there's nothing I can do to get this weight off other than to just pray to God and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I've always been a sinner. I always, always will be a sinner, but I am going to repent of my sins, Lord, with your help. I want to give my life to you, Jesus, because you died on the cross for me. You spilled your blood for me. And, uh, I mean, it was like a weight had been lifted. It was like all that junk that was in my well is gone. I just took it and just threw it out. 
And I said, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. Because you know what? There's nothing I did to deserve that. There's nothing I did to deserve that. But he loved me. Hey, I couldn't give up my son for somebody else, but he could. And he put a fire inside of me to serve him. To teach my kids. To be the husband I should be to my wife. To be the father I should be to my kids. And he just put this fire in me to serve. I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to give, bring him glory. And to just look for his will and to seek him out. I spent 20 eight years of my life running every direction except for to him up to that point in my life. And I've spent nearly the next five years I stumble but I, I follow him. I'm seeking him out. There ain't a day I don't stumble but there isn't a day that I don't pray to him and say Jesus, thank you but please just help me out. Get through this. I'm going to mess up. You know I'll mess up. But thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving my life. You know, Lord, he's, he's good at setting us on fire and the Holy Spirit just working in this church. It just really gave us the drive to, to do things that I didn't think I could do. And, uh, <laughs> you know, about the time you think things are getting kind of easy, that's when the Lord comes up and says, we're going to do something new. And we had the opportunity to come up with one church. You know, I, it's, not, it's not easy to, to say, well, we're going to pick up and, and go walk on down and serve at a new, or you know, help out with a new church and serve at a new church. But it's not supposed to be easy. So I'm just thankful that uh, really we get the opportunity to serve in this way as a family, with friends. But one thing uh, I want to tell you, you know, after being saved, I was pretty confident. You know, I knew that when I died, whether it be when the Lord returns or when He calls me home, I go to heaven. And I knew I loved my family and loved my friends Love all of you. But uh, sometimes we all need a reminder. I didn't think I needed a reminder. And uh, I got one. I didn't tell anybody. I'm kind of a private person. Don't tell people a lot of things. But uh, on December 4th of last year, I was at work. We were actually out of town. And uh, I didn't know if I'd share this or not. But it kind of, I don't know. Anyway, I was... We were out of town. We had been up in Bland, Virginia. We were doing some equipment inspections. We had gone to eat lunch in Withville, if you all know where that's at. And, uh, you know, it was a beautiful day. It was that nice warm weather we were having. On my way home, somebody crossed the center line on the road back to the interstate and hit my car head on. I didn't even, I mean, it just happened. I mean, I couldn't snap my fingers fast enough to show you how fast it happened. It was an 18-year-old, 17-year-old boy trying to beat a traffic light, trying to cut across the intersection and make a turn, and he hit my car head on. And when every, the airbags came out and everything, I mean, it was just, I didn't know what happened. I finally realized that I was alive and that I was okay and that, you know, I really wasn't as scared as I thought I would be because I had Jesus with me. Jesus was on my side. He was fighting for me. It wasn't my time. He had other plan for me that day. If it had been my time and it had been five years earlier, I'd be in hell. I'd never see my little boy who's just saved. I wouldn't see my wife. Jesus has done a lot for me. And I can't 
There's nothing I could do on my own to repay him. I've served Jesus because he's worthy. I'd like to close in prayer if y'all don't mind. Lord, I just want to thank you for your son, Jesus. I want to thank you for, everything, for him dying on the cross for us. Lord, I just want to thank you for you intervening in my life, for Jesus interceding on my behalf because I was writing checks in my life that I, my, I just could not cash. I was on, a, on the road to hell. And you, you, Lord, you just came into my life. You, you shook up my life and you set it back on the right road. Lord, I just want to thank you for this church and my friends and my family. Lord, they, they are my, they keep me accountable, Lord. I love all them and Lord, I, I still, I love you more. I love you the most. You are, you are worthy, Lord. It's in your son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you so much, Derek. Appreciate that. And uh, now Charlie, make his way up here. Um, so proud of Charlie. So glad I can call Charlie my friend because when I told him I was going to ask him to do this, he said, I'll kill you. <laughs> so he hasn't yet, but I'm getting out of here. Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate you. Uh, now y'all just bear with me. I am nervous as a long tail tomcat in a room full of rocking chairs now. Uh, I'm going to pick mine up in the year 1988. Uh, at that point up to my life, I did not grow up in church. Uh, was familiar with it. I know I needed Christ but through what people told me, but it's just, I always pushed it aside. So, no, nah, it's not for me. <clears throat> met my wife in, uh, I think it was 88. She was dating a friend of mine, my cousin, and uh, we, we became friends. And she would ride me around when I was hitting the sauce drinking. We was riding around one night, and uh, just out of the blue, I don't know where this come from, nothing. She said, I cannot get serious about a man if he will not give his life to Christ. Well, that caught me totally off guard, you know. And I, all I would say, I kind of sidestepped it and said, yeah, I said, I know that's what I need, need to do. Fast forward to 89, we got married. She kept, or we started dating, I'm sorry. She kept after me to start going to church. And I never would go. Fast forward to 91. Uh, she uh, was still after me to go to church. And she finally talked me into going to Easter, about two, it was Easter Sunday, about two months before we got married. I finally agreed to go. We go, and I don't think I missed another Sunday after that point until we got married in June. I know that's what I needed. The Lord was drawing me, but I was fighting. I was fighting it every step of the way. We got married in June, uh, kept going to church, and then the th uh, Sunday before Thanksgiving in 91, I would, uh, well, back up here, when, when they'd have an altar call, I'd watch the call white knuckle. I'd grab that pew, and I'd squeeze, and I'd about jerk it out, jerk the pew, out of the floor knowing that's what he wanted, but I wasn't about to give in to him. I didn't give up for nothing. I was a fighter. Anyway, in uh, that Thanksgiving, the Sunday before we went to, it was a youth rally, wasn't it? At uh, First Free Will in Churchill down here. And walked in that morning, they had a sign up that said, No Deal Devil. That was the sign. Well, they started singing a song. I couldn't tell you what it was. I can't remember. And her uncle was with us. And they had an altar call. They never preached or nothing, had an altar call. And he put his arm around me and it just felt like the Lord was hugging me. He was using her uncle as the Lord said, Charlie, I love you. I'll go with you. And I, I just said, I, I can't take this more. I got surrendered. And I got saved that morning. And if, uh, I've always been told if somebody walked up and hit me that morning, I'd, I'd probably give them sugar. You couldn't, have, you couldn't have made me mad. So that was 24 years ago. I've uh, ups and downs. Lord's given me two good kids, for the most part, I'll, I'll say that. 
No, they, they, are, they are good youngins. They're going to make mistakes just like I did. Uh, I guess that's it. That's, <laughs> Thank you both so much. You know, uh, I must say, I hear a theme in both of those testimonies is how thankful we are for you ladies, the influence you've had on our lives, and how um, you've encouraged us. So we thank you all for that as well. And um, I think now uh, we're going to probably head down to the rock. So uh, I'd like to go ahead and bless the desserts. Uh, I do hope there's some down there. <laughs> If not, we'll go out. I don't know. We'll figure something out. But let's bless the, uh, the food. Father God, we thank you so much for this day and your many blessings. We thank you so much for these men who stood up and through your help and guidance, and you gave them courage to give their testimonies. And Father, we know that that honors you. And tonight you're smiling because of these men's faith that you have drawn them into this place. And we thank you so much for their testimony. We thank you so much for this church and our church family. And Lord, we, uh, we just pray that whatever we said and do tonight and what we've done and, and said so far has been a, in honor of you. And as we go down, we just ask you to bless our fellowship. And be with us, be with our pastor, be with uh, those traveling. Be with those who couldn't be here tonight. We, we thank you and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.